All right, so we kind of got the general idea of this chip. We haven't gone into the details yet, but we haven't got the general idea of this chip. And it, it, it goes through this uh, divide by 64 counter. Now remember, it was divided by, divided by 64 or divide by 65, depending on the state of pin one. And guess what? This chip drives pin one. So this chip sometimes lets this thing divide by 64. Sometimes it lets it divide by 65. It just depends on how it's feeling. <laughs> but that gives it the idea to be able to divide by n or divide by n plus 1. And uh, it will not just set it and forget it. It will actually be continuously modifying whether it's divided by 64 or divided by 65, depending on its on its mathematics it's trying to do. Now you would think that that jitter would maybe cause some problems, but we'll get to the end here, which is this low pass filter, which is probably an averaging filter. So as long as you average that out, you can actually get um, finer resolution of your frequency uh, by having this, this kind of jitter here on divide by 64 to 65. So we'll take a look at some scope traces here. You can see when pin one is high in yellow, then the device is, is dividing and the period is about 516. You can look at delta x, 516. And um, if we take a look at when the divide by 65 is enabled, then we get uh, 5 to 4. Um, anyway, it gives you some finer detail. All right, we're almost done. Uh, so after this uh, phase detection is done, it generates two signals that need to be uh, subtracted from one another to give either a, a voltage that goes up or a voltage that goes down or a voltage that's perfectly stable because the loop is working great. And so that happens in this section here. So this is the uh, next section we'll talk about. All right. So it's an op amp. And uh, let's take a look at what that might be. It looks like there's a lot of components there and it looks a little bit complicated. But if we redraw it, like I always say, if something looks complicated, redraw it and it might make more sense, right? And that's perfectly the case here. And so, yeah, let me redraw it. So this may look familiar. This is a classic difference amplifier. It's going to be, uh, you know, A minus B and it's going to go out there. And um, in this particular case that we have all of the, uh, all the resistors are the same, 10K, 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 10K. So it's a gain of one, right? And, but it does a, it does a subtraction. It does a difference. And so, yeah, difference amplifier, um, there you go. But you say, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> this one's got, this one's got, uh, this one's got some uh, capacitors in it. So it actually looks like this, okay? So what does that do? Well, <laughs> capacitor to ground, yeah, that's a low pass filter. And this one in the feedback, it slows the feedback down. So it's a low pass filter. So this is just a very strange form of a low pass filter. Um, and you want that low pass filter because of the clocks. Remember the output of that phase detector is a bunch of clocks. And you want the average of that, but you don't want all those hard edges of the clock. You need to filter those out. So that's what this low pass filter does. It gets rid of all of those whack, 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 whack. And then you want to take an average. So you want to pick a particular um, a cut time constant for your averaging filter. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to see how, how this is designed, okay? Now, this wasn't quite enough. They found that they needed to follow it by another filter, all right? And so it actually is two filters back to back. Um, and we can see that here. This is this one. And then here's the other one. This R and the C is a second RC con uh, constant. And it, it's an RC, RC here. So it's this plus this. Get some nice, quiet, smooth, either a rising voltage or lowering voltage. It follows whether you're going too fast or too slow. It follows everything. So that's what that filter does also called the loop filter and a face lock loop. Um, now you might have noticed that this, this has a couple diodes in it as well. What, what are those diodes doing there, okay? So let me draw on the diodes over here. They're actually here. Okay. So what they found when they designed this thing was it worked great. It worked just fine, but 
if you went and clicked your knob and changed frequencies, if there was a big jump, it would just take too long to get there. It, it, it would just take this loop way too long to settle to that higher voltage um, or that lower voltage. And so they put in these diodes as shortcuts. So if the voltage gets too much, the differential voltage gets too much, you made a big swing out here, then this is, uh, this is a speed up circuit. It's a shortcut speed up circuit. And that's why those diodes are in there. All right, so I think we are done with the loop. Hoorah. Um, so one more time, we have a VCO. We're gonna generate a uh, voltage which is gonna change the capacitance. That capacitance that sets the oscillating frequency of this Colpitz oscillator. It then gets divided down and sent into here. You generate your own clock using this crystal and then you compare those two clocks and hopefully they're the same. If they're not, then this differential will see that. It will come around and it'll modify the voltage here, either making it go too fast or too slow. It will modify it and this is the loop. So it's one big, gigantic loop. Okay, let's quickly talk about these lines here. These lines feed this chip and they feed it to synthesize a frequency. That's what all of these lines do, to synthesize a frequency that you wanna compare. Now, when we set the frequency here and this whole thing gets divided down, I, keep, I kept saying, oh, it's divided by 64 and everything. Well, it gets divided down even further in this chip. And the way they have it designed, the output, the two clocks that finally get put into the um, phase detection is five kilohertz. We have 144 here, but right when we start to do the phase detection, it's a, it's a five kilohertz signal that you're comparing the phase to, right? Now, that can be troublesome because you're comparing a very low frequency to a very high frequency. So small changes here actually will get amplified because you're a much higher frequency here. So the, the loop has to be stable. Uh, it does work. It is done all the time. And you have to pay a lot of attention to make sure your filter is very stable and your VCO is very stable. Otherwise the thing will kind of oscillate and stuff. So yeah, you're comparing very low frequencies here and um, you're just making sure that whatever you got is equal to whatever you synthesized. It just, they both get divided down. So you're comparing apples and apples. It's just a low frequency. Mm.